Hello boys and girls. Welcome to my art room. Today we're going to be reading There's a Walkin' in My Pocket, written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss. And then we're going to be creating an art project based on the story after we're done reading it. So get ready. Here we go. There's a Walkin' in My Pocket, written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss. This is a rhyming book, which means it uses a lot of words that sound similar. And Dr. Seuss made up his own words, such as walk it. And that's a creature that you'll be creating today. This is an example of a walk it in the pocket. And I'll be showing you how to make your own after the story. So stay tuned for that. And a findo in my window and a nook case in my bookcase. Did you ever have the feeling there's a wasket in your basket? Or a Nero in your bureau? Or a wasset in your closet? Sometimes I feel quite certain there's a jerton in the curtain. Sometimes I have the feeling there's a slock behind the clock. And that Zelf up on the shelf, I have talked to him myself. That's the kind of house I live in. There's a nink in the sink and a zamp in the lamp. And they're rather nice, I think. Some of them are very friendly, like the yacht in the pot. But that yachtle in the bottle, some are friendly, some are not. I like the zabel on the table and the gear under the chair, but that bofa on the sofa, well, I wish he wasn't there. All those nut boards and the cupboards, they're great fun to have about, but that toothbrush on my toothbrush, him, I could do without. The only one I'm really scared of is that vug under the rug. And that Quimney up the chimney, I don't like him, not at all. And it makes me sort of nervous when the Zal scoots down the hall. But the yeps on the steps, they're great fun to have around. And so are many, many other friends that I have found. Like the Teller and the Neller and the Geller and the Deller and the beller, and the weller, and the zeller, in the cellar. And the geeling on the ceiling, and the zower in my shower. And the zillow on my pillow. I don't care if you believe it. That's the kind of house I live in, and I hope we never leave it. Thank you for listening to the story, and stay tuned for us to create our own wockets in pockets. So in art, we have seven elements, the seven elements of art. And I'm gonna quickly review them for you today. The first element is the element of line. Wavy lines, straight lines, zigzag lines, just changing the way your marker is moving on the paper. The second element is shape, circles, squares, triangles. Take those lines and connect them at the ends for your shapes. Forms are three-dimensional. They come off the paper. This would include cubes, cones, spheres, pyramids. These are forms. They're different than shapes because they're 3D. Then we have space. This is how close or far apart things are on your paper, the element of space. Then we have the element of texture, how things feel or appear to feel on your paper. Is it soft? Is it hard? Is it bumpy? Is it rough? The element of texture. Then we have the element of value, how light or dark something is on your paper. So we have light grays and dark grays, blacks and whites. And then we have the element of color. This is most people's favorites. 
the whole color wheel. And we have the seven elements of art. For this project, we need to make sure that we know the difference between line and shape. Lines would include straight lines, wavy lines, dashed, dotted, zigzag, whatever kind of lines you want to make, but they're not connected at the ends. These would be lines. You can make thin and thick of any type of line. As long as they don't connect at the end, they're still a line. Now we're going to move into shape. Shapes, you take lines and connect them. So if we were to take a straight line and add two more and connect them, we have a triangle. Straight lines also make squares. Straight lines also make diamonds. We're just connecting them at the ends. Use different lines. A curve line, you can make a cloud. You could also make a circle with a curved line and even transform that circle into a flower. So shapes are lines that are connected on the ends. Shapes are connected, lines are not. This is really important when we get into drawing our wockets. I'm going to draw this first wocket using simple lines for their arms and legs. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the other wocket, once again with straight lines, but this time I'm going to transform those straight lines into shapes as rectangles. So we have our lines versus our shapes. Now watch what happens when we cut them out. So cut the line out and look, all of the arms and legs are falling off. You do not want this. So make sure you're using shapes, not lines. So on the shape wocket, I'm carefully cutting around the shape arms and legs and they're staying together. Please make sure you use shapes for your arms and legs so you can have a happy together wocket instead of a sad falling apart wocket. Shapes, not lines. You ready? Let's begin. So we will be drawing our wockets. You can draw them however you want. Just make sure you have everything off the checklist. Head, eyes, nose, mouth, body, and arms. Extra details are up to you. If you wanna add feet and legs, hair, wings, whatever, add it. Our wockets will be inside a pocket so their feet will be hidden. So it's not necessary, but you can add them. You can use any kind of paper, notebook paper, white paper, colored paper, does not matter for this project. Just make sure you have everything off the checklist. I'm gonna start off showing you how to draw a wocket on white paper. Make sure you're using shapes, not lines. And make sure you have everything off the checklist. I normally always draw with pencil first, and I suggest you do the same. I'm just drawing with marker, so it's easier for you to see. I'm gonna start off with a head, and I think I'm going to draw a circle for the head just like that. For the eyes, I'm gonna draw two lines straight across to make it into a rectangle. And I'm gonna give him two square pupils, just like that. It's your wocket, draw it your way. There is no right or no wrong. I'm gonna now add the nose and I'm just gonna make a triangle. The mouth is inside, the mouth is odd. Since it's inside the other shapes, you can just draw a line for the mouth if you would like to. I'm gonna give him a little curve to make him a happy pocket. Now I'm gonna add the body and I'm gonna make up a shape this time. I'm gonna use a wavy line, but remember it has to be a shape so I have to connect it and I'm going to connect it with a curved line. So now I have a new made up shape for my body and that's fine and that is okay. I used a wavy and a curved and now I'm going to go on to the arms and I'm going to make little hands. I'm going to draw a W with an extra U for fingers and I'm going to connect the top with a curved line. A W, an extra U, and then connect the top with a curved line. So now I have the arms. I have everything I need off of my checklist. Now I can add my extra details. Any extra details I want to add. They're all okay. I'm going to give them some eyebrows. I'm going to give him some wings because there is no right or wrong. 
just make sure that they are shapes so they do not fall apart when you cut them. And I'm going to give him some little polka dots, just like this. There is my first wocket. I'm going to quickly show you two different ways to draw your wockets. And it's just going to be quickly drawn through. So this is on colored paper. Once again, I'm using shapes for the body parts. And this time I'm going to add some feet and some hair. And that's my second wocket that to the side. And now my third wocket is going to be on just simple notebook paper. Once again, using shapes. And I'm going to make this one into a girl with my extra details. And now we're ready to cut them out. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut right around the outside edges of all three wockets. And just like that, all three are cut out. And now we're ready for the next step. Now on to creating the pockets for our wockets. Use whatever you have at your house. Stick glue, staples, wet glue, tape, whatever you have, use. And use whatever kind of paper you have. Colored paper, notebook paper, blank paper, whatever you have, use it. I'm going to show you three different ways that you could make your pockets. One way is you can fold a sheet of paper over another sheet of paper and you can connect it on the ends. This way is really neat because you'll end up with a pocket on the front and the back. You could use a stapler or tape to just connect it on the sides. That's one way you can make your pocket. Another way you might want to make your pocket is by drawing it out on a sheet of paper. So I'm just going to quickly draw out my pocket and I'm going to cut it out around the outside edge and I'm going to attach it on the edges and I'm just going to use some painter's tape because that's what I have at my house to tape it on the edges. Just like that. Make sure you leave the top opening open for your wocket and make sure your pocket is big enough for your wocket to slip inside of. So now this wocket has a little pocket that he can live in. And one final way if you don't have any adhesive such as tape or glue at your house you can just draw out your pocket and then cut it out along the top edge using scissors and you can have a pocket that your wocket will just slip right inside of. And for my last pocket. I'm just going to take one sheet of paper, fold it over, and tape the edges for a cute little pocket for my wocket to slip inside of. So now I have all three pockets done in different ways. Use whichever way works the best for you. Folding, taping, or just cutting out the top. And now we're going to add our last bit of details with color. If you can remember, Back to earlier in the video, we talked about the seven elements of art. Color was one of the seven elements, and we're going to be adding it to our wockets and pockets. You can use crayons, markers, colored pencils, whatever you have available at your house, use. One thing about markers, only use it if it's a light piece of paper, not if it's a dark piece of paper. For my first wocket, I'm going to color it in using colored pencils. Using different colors for the different areas. And he is colored in, and now I'm going to color in his pocket. There's some shapes already on here, so I'm just going to outline them with my colored pencil. And then I'm going to add some straight lines to the background. And his pocket is decorated for him to slip inside of. Now to move on to the next one. With this one, since this wocket is a dark color, you want to make sure you use either colored pencils or crayons. For dark colors paper, do not use markers. They do not show up well on dark paper. So I'm going to color her in using different colors of crayon.
any color is just fine. And now I'm going to decorate her pocket. Add some wavy lines, color them in, make a pattern, some polka dots in the background, and color in around that. And her pocket is done. And for my last locket, I'm going to use markers for her. It's just coloring in the different shapes, different colors. And since this is a light color, marker will still show up on this. If it's a dark color of paper, it would not. I'm going to add some stripes. I'm going to use several different colors to make it more interesting. And now that pocket is also done. So however you decide to draw your locket, make sure you have all the things you need off the checklist. Do you have your locket? Does your locket have a head, eyes, nose, mouth, body, and arms? Extra details are up to you and they're all okay. Does your locket have a pocket that they're sitting in? Make your pocket however you want to. There is no right or wrong as long as your locket has a pocket to live in. And are they colored? You can use crayons, markers, pencils, whatever you have at your availability to color. I cannot wait to see what you are going to create with this project.